Greetings, everyone. This is the Gardening Snail of Livingston, California, just trying to keep the community informed and local government as honest as possible. In this video, we will be looking at the staff report for the public hearing, first reading an introduction of ordinance adding Livingston Municipal Code, Title 10, Chapter 14, Military Equipment Use by Ordinance, and adopting a policy that regulates the use of military equipment by the Livingston Police Department on the March 15, 2022 City Council meeting agenda. The recommendation, staff recommends that the City Council take the following action. Adopt the ordinance establishing the requirements for a policy that regulates the use of military equipment by the City of Livingston Police Department and adopting a policy for the use of military equipment. Background. On September 30th, 2021, Governor Newsom signed into law Assembly Bill 481, AB 481, relating to the use of military equipment by law enforcement agencies. AB 481, codified in California Government Code Sections 7070 through 7075, requires that any law enforcement agency seeking to use existing or new military equipment to create a military use policy present the policy for governing board approval by ordinance and produce annual reports pertaining to the policy and use of military equipment. The City of Livingston Police Department seeks the City Council's adoption of the ordinance which establishes the requirements of the City's military equipment use policy as required under AB 481 to allow the department to continue using the vital equipment in the course of the department's activities and adopt the policy. Analysis. The proposed ordinance establishes the requirements for the department's military use policy and approves a policy under AB 481 and the ordinance. The policy must outline each item identified in Government Code Section 7070 as military equipment that the city currently owns or uses. The military equipment identified in Government Code Section 7070 that must be identified in the policy includes unmanned remotely piloted air or ground vehicles such as drones, armored vehicles, Humvees, battering rams, firearms and ammunition of .50 caliber or greater, not including shotguns and shotgun ammunition, flashbangs and other explosive breaching tools, rubber bullets and other associated specialty impact munitions. Where the department seeks to use any of the equipment, the city council must adopt a policy by ordinance that must include a description of the equipment, the quantity sought, its capacities, and expected lifespan, the purposes and authorized uses of the equipment, the fiscal impact of acquiring and maintaining each type of equipment, the legal and procedural rules that govern use of the equipment, the training required to use the equipment, the compliance mechanisms to enforce the policy, the procedure for the public to register complaints or submit questions about the equipment. If the City Council elects to adopt the ordinance, the City Council both establishes the criteria for military use policy that will be added to the City of Livingston Municipal Code and adopts a policy. As required under AB 481 in the ordinance, the policy proposed for adoption has been made publicly available on the department's website for 30 days prior to this meeting to consider the ordinance. How many of you knew about that? I didn't. In adopting the ordinance to approve the policy, the City Council must find all the following. 1. The equipment is necessary because there is no reasonable alternative that can achieve the same objective of officer and civilian safety. 2. The policy will safeguard the public's welfare, safety, civil rights, and civil liberties. 3. If equipment is being purchased, the equipment is reasonably cost-effective compared to available alternatives that can achieve the same objective of officer and civilian safety. 4. Prior equipment use complied with the policy that was in effect at that time or where equipment use did not comply, corrective action has been taken to remedy non-conforming use and ensure future compliance. Should the City Council adopt the ordinance, each calendar year an annual military equipment report will be submitted to City Council for review and approval, as long as military equipment is maintained by the department. 
As required under the ordinance, the annual military equipment report must include a summary of how the equipment was used and the purpose of its use, a summary of any complaints or concerns received concerning the equipment, the results of any internal audits, any information about violations of the policy, and any actions taken in response. The total annual cost for each type of equipment, including acquisition, personnel training, transportation, maintenance, storage, upgrade, and other ongoing costs, and from what source funds will be provided for the equipment in the calendar year following submission of the annual military equipment report. The quantity possessed for each type of equipment. If the law enforcement agency intends to acquire additional equipment in the next year, the quantity sought for each type of equipment. Future acquisitions of any item deemed military equipment will require further public meetings, policy updates, and city council approval. Items identified as military equipment by AB 481 are resources used in overall best practices for law enforcement agencies throughout the country. There are numerous examples of incidents that demonstrate the need for more effective options for law enforcement, such as patrol rifles and armored rescue vehicles. In addition, military equipment items are field-tested tools used to enhance the safety of communities and the officers that serve them. Now let's take a look at the definitions of the things included. Unmanned, remotely piloted, powered aerial or ground vehicles. Mine resistant, ambush protected vehicles or armored personnel carriers. High mobility, multi-purpose wheeled vehicles, commonly referred to as Humvees. Two and one half ton trucks, five ton trucks or wheeled vehicles that have a breaching or entry apparatus attached. Continuing with the list, notice there are some exceptions. Tracked armored vehicles that provide ballistic protection to their occupants. Command and control vehicles that are either built or modified to facilitate the operational control and direction of public safety units. Weaponized aircraft, vessels, or vehicles of any kind. Battering rams, slugs, and breaching apparatuses that are explosive in nature. Firearms of .50 caliber or greater ammunition of .50 caliber or greater, specialized firearms and ammunition of less than .50 caliber, including assault weapons as defined in sections 30510 and 30515 of the Penal Code. Any firearm or firearm accessory that is designed to launch explosive projectiles, flashbang grenades and explosive breaching tools, tear gas and pepper balls, taser shockwave, microwave weapons, water cannons, and the long-range acoustic device, otherwise known as an LRAD, which can really mess up your head and your ears. The following projectile launch platforms and their associated munitions, 40 millimeter projectile launchers, beanbag, rubber bullet, and specialty impact munitions weapons. Any other equipment as determined by a governing body or a state agency to require additional oversight. Notwithstanding paragraphs 1 through 15, military equipment does not include general equipment not designated as prohibited or controlled by the Federal Defense Logistics Agency. For those of you who may be interested in reading the staff report and all of the attachments, I would suggest that you go to the city's website and click on agendas and minutes. Then click on the link to the city council regular meeting for March 15th. Once that comes up, start reading at page 12. Photo credit and disclaimer. Any views, opinions, or editorial content expressed on these videos are my own as a resident of Livingston and do not represent the views and opinions of the Livingston City Council or the City of Livingston itself.